Hi Flosstube. Today is January the 8th and this is Dina and I'm back for just a short uh, clip for this part of my video. Hopefully I'll be able to share this with you uh, for my Flossiversary uh, when I returned uh, from my trip. So I wanted to get this part of the video done a little bit ahead of time uh, so that it'll be ready when I get back. So today, I have a few things to share with you. One, I'd like to share with you my progress on the sale that I did with Stitch Mania for the 12 days of Christmas. And I'll just remind you of the pattern that I used for the 12 days of Christmas, which is entitled 12 days of Christmas. It's in an older magazine, so I used it also for the a magazine sale that's been put on by a couple of our floss tubers and uh, this is from cross stitch Christmas the better homes and garden collection and it's an October 2002 uh, edition if you want to try to find it on eBay or Hershner's or one of those stores um, I'm not sure where else you might could get it I'm sorry but this year I will probably be doing a lot of old uh, magazine pieces because I'm in that magazine sale, so I think that'll be important to tell you that I might be using things that if you don't have them, you might have to eBay to find them or something like that, but this is how far I got on the 12 different starts. I have a section marked off at the top where the, on the 12th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me will go, and then you see day one two and three there, those starts. And then we go today, four calling birds, five golden rings, and the six geese laying starts there. And then you have seven, eight, and nine, the swans, the eight maids and milking, and the nine ladies dancing. And then we get into the um, 10 Lords Leaping, 11 Pipers Piping, and 12 Drummers drummer, Drumming. And you can see I had varying amounts of time each day from Christmas Day until that uh, last day in January that I was to start this. But I'll back away here and let you kind of see the whole piece here. I think that's going to make a lovely um, piece to put up at Christmas time. So I'm happy with how that's coming out. And I've decided just to put this in my whip rotation so that I can finish it for next Christmas. Um, I plan on taking it with me on my uh, trip because I think it would be an easy one to work on. Um, each little motif would look a little bit like, to me, like a small finish. And the way that I gridded this one, let me share that with you just quickly. Um, I laid out my fabric since this is a different layout than the magazine. The magazine is a table topper, so it goes around the edge and there's a blank space in the middle for your centerpiece. I wanted something I could hang up, and so I just did mine as more of a layout for a wall hanging. And you'll notice that each space, each block is evenly spaced all the way down in rows and columns. And I gridded just those squares. I gridded where the square was going to go. And then after I looked at it and saw that I liked my placement that I would calculated, then I gridded each square to make it easy to do the little pictures, even though they're fairly small. I didn't want to get into it and then wish I had gridded, so it didn't take that long to grid those little squares. But since then, showing uh, these each day, uh, in Stitch Mania, I had a request from someone there if I would sit down and do a tutorial video on how I calculated the layout on my fabric since the magazine layout was totally different. Now, <laughs> I, I got a little nervous at the word tutorial <laughs> because I don't feel like I'm uh, ready to be a teacher of any kind yet. Um, but I was flattered to be asked to do that. And so, uh, in the spirit of sharing, <laughs> since we do share and try to help each other out, I will try my best to film the next piece that I lay out. And it won't be that long because for Christmas, I got a gift from my family to do 
uh, I got the patterns to do a piece that's very going to be very similar like the Christmas Santa Village or the Gingerbread House Village. This is just a different series and I'm going to put it together on my own. So I will have to calculate the layout. I will have to determine, you know, how much space to put between each house and between the rows. And so I will use the same process that I used for uh, the 12 Days of Christmas. And I will try to film it as I go and talk about it and explain what I'm doing. And I, I'm doing that for two reasons. One, someone asked me to share it with them and I'm happy to do that. And second, I'm hoping you guys could see it and then say, oh, Dina, you're just doing this a hard way. Go ahead and do it this way. It'll make it so much easier. I'm hoping to learn something from you guys. So if you see what I'm doing and you figure out a shortcut or you've already figured out a shortcut that you could share with me, I would really like that. That That is one of the things I love about our community is that we really do help each other. We share things. We don't just keep it to ourselves. So I want to thank you in advance for that. And I'll be filming that probably... Um, maybe in the month of February or so. It's not going to be right away because I do have a little bit of traveling I'll be doing and then I'll have to get home and get situated again. So um, it won't be right away. But I just wanted to let you know in case you're that person who requested it that I am planning it and I will do it in the near future. So in this year at least, but hopefully sooner rather than later. So the other thing I want to share with you today is a new start. <laughs> Yes, I am doing uh, the Year of Whips, <laughs> and I have finished four of my required five. I'm actually hoping maybe I'll get to finish more than five, but everything I have left are large projects, and I think I mentioned this on a previous, my, my most recent video, that since I'm going to be traveling, I wanted something I could take with me that I didn't have a working copy, you know, really big out here that I'm marking up as I go. So I just looked at my Christmas stuff and decided that I would start Four Freedoms. And Laurel, I saw you mention this on your video that I just watched yesterday, that you're planning on starting this, and I had just started it the day before. I was so excited, so we'll be stitching it hopefully about the same time. So keep me posted on how you're doing, and I'll do the same for you. But this is my Four Freedoms. And I um, am doing it on ale. It's a picture of this plus uh, hand dyed 28 count cashel linen. And to help me along with my travel, I just did a small start. I just did the top banner across the top and got that done. So I now have a reference point to go from there. I did not grid this piece because it is not. A very difficult pattern. It's not something I could easily get too lost in. There's also quite a bit of space between the motifs. So conceptually, if you're off one stitch uh, through here somewhere, you're probably not going to be able to know it. Um, so I just thought rather than take all the time that it takes to grid, I just didn't think I would need it so badly with this one. I was able to do Home of the Needle Worker without a grid, and it worked out just fine. But it is a smaller piece, and it's very much like this. Everything is spaced apart enough that if you just are careful and try to get all your spaces between the major components here, you'll be okay. So I'm going to try it. If I start having problems, I'm going to take my sulky sliver with me, and I'll have it. And I can stop and grid it if I want to. But I was trying to save a little time. Um, wanted to have some time to work on uh, a couple of whips before I got out of town that were those big uh, working copies that I don't want to take with me um, because they take up so much room. So I have all my um, threads pulled and I did I tried to put them on a ring that I had and they slipped right out. They're so small. So I took my scissor fob that has a clip on it, a claw. And I claw clipped them together. And now that's, 
how they hang. And they can open from out here so I don't even have to take them off this little clip. This is temporary, but I thought it would work for now. Uh, and that's how I packed it to go. So that's my little start, my very small start on the Little House Needleworks pattern called Four Freedoms. And I'll be taking this with me and the Christmas, 12 Days of Christmas with me for sure uh, when I travel. And then I'm thinking of possibly taking a Mill Hill kit with me or something like that. So I wanted to share that with you since I just got started. And then the last thing I have today for this little section of my video is a, a rack that I was given. And I want to tell you about this. There's a, um, a young lady that I met at my church and I shared with her my love of cross stitch. And she and I have chatted since then on several occasions and been to parties together at church and, and just have been able to stay connected, which I am very, very grateful for. And she called me this past week. Her, her mom um, gifted her all of her cross stitch stash. She stitched for about 40 years. Hasn't stitched for a long time. So I got a phone call from my friend and she said, she didn't tell me what it was. She just said, I have a little thing I want to bring you, just a little gift. And um, she said, can I come by and do that? And of course, you know, that was fine. So she came over and brought me two big grocery bags full of items. And and I didn't know what they were. I just knew there were two bags full of stuff. And she told me that it was her mom's stash and that her mother had um, asked her, did she know anyone who really might appreciate it? And she thought of me. And I was so delighted that she did. Um, so she came over and she dropped that off. And I spent more time, really, I, I played with the her youngest um, her newest addition to her family, um, and and the daughter, uh, her older daughter, uh, we had such a wonderful playtime for a little while, and then she had to go. So, um, it was a it was a lovely visit. And then after she left, I sat down and thought, well, I need to look through here and see what she left me, and I was thrilled. And so I thought today I would just show you briefly this beautiful rack that she gave me. Um, the first thing um, was a little hoop and it's in great shape. Uh, it's not rusted. It, it, it only has um, a couple of little rough spots on the plastic that could be sanded off. I don't use hoops, um, but I thought this would be a really nice item to keep handy in case someone wanted me to teach them to cross stitch and they needed some supplies, I could gift them with something to help them get started. I tend to do that um, when I can. So I thought I'll just keep that for someone else. I'll pass that along. But this is what tickled me the most. This was her DMC collection. These are almost full, both of them. And I've looked, they are DMC numbered. And um, she actually had some of the DMC wrapper with the number on it in the box where she had just bobbinated something. And there's even a whole row in here of, um, of the bobbins, blank bobbins of what she was using. She stored them right in the box here. So I have some extra bobbins. So I thought this is great because what I will do is I'll keep these. And if I'm looking for a color and I don't find it in my stash, I will go and look in this stash and maybe be able to pull it out. Now, there's there are some colors in here that there's very little left on the spool, but I haven't thrown it out because you could always be just a few stitches shy and run out of a color. So I'm just going to keep it for a while. I'm just so excited about it, you know, to get a whole... Um, couple of boxes of DMC uh, was pretty exciting um, for me anyway. There was some fabric. It is um, Ada, but it's 18 count Ada, and it's cream, and it looks like it's in really great shape. It looks clean. It's been protected in this little bag, and so I thought that's a great um, piece of Ada to, that I can use for a project or some Christmas tree ornaments or things like that. So I'm excited about that. 
I thought that was very nice. And then I won't necessarily share these one-on-one -on -one with you, but this is the stack of magazines and patterns that were included in the stash. Now we'll tell you, they're very old, but most of mine are too. So the majority of these, I'm going to push down till I find one that's not. Um, and I haven't put them in order yet to see how many months I actually have. But these are 88 and 90, the years. These are all cross-stitch and country crafts, this stack. Um, I have not looked through um, completely every one of them. I recognize a couple of them. They're ones I already have. Um, you know, this, um, this book right here has the Christmas stocking in it that I did for my son. So I probably got it from that very magazine. I still have the magazine that I did my stockings from. But there's um, a number of magazines here. This one's kind of interesting with the nautical pattern there, too. Anyway, I, um, I have a whole stack of these to look through and see, you know, what I have. And then if it's something that I don't particularly uh, want to use or want, don't have anything in there I want, want to use, uh, then I may offer them up, make a list of them and... Uh, any of them you want to see, I can do a, a flip through real quick. And then I've got other various patterns here. Um, cross Quick. The classic cross stitch by Hirschner's. I've got several Leisure Arts um, designs. This one's a baby one. And actually... Just so y'all know how old I am. This is the book, same book I used and made this quilt the same size but with a blue background for my son for his nursery. He had a Noah's Ark nursery and that was his quilt. <laughs> and then this one, um, it could be pretty popular. And you know I have a friend who collects these might be seeing some of those for sure. And then I thought of Blitz Stitch. Here's all these mallards. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Um, there's a Christmas one. Silent Night, Holy Night. That was pretty lovely. And um, a bear one. Bears were real popular when my son was younger. And I have a couple of uh, Dale Burdett books. Do y'all remember Dale? Some of you have been stitching a long time. This is a pretty wedding sampler book. I haven't looked at all of these, but um, here's another one. They look like they might be kind of interesting and not too terribly um, difficult. And then they've got some that are just cutesies, you know, in here. I'll just share that with you. Like the bears. And the angels. That's pretty nice. So I don't know, um, you know, if I'll have a need for that or not. Um, these are Jeanette Cruz designs. These are a whole bunch of kids stuff. <laughs> if you were putting together your own pattern, here's something you might could use to add a toy to theirs. Then there were two alphabet books, which we can always use that. I'm always looking for a good alphabet to, to go with a, a piece if I've written something like the poem that I did this year for Christmas. Um, here are 50 angels and then angels all around. So several possibilities there for angels. And if you like um, the production of Annie, there's an entire book here with Annie. And then mini motifs. Little bitty ones. Cute. There's even a waste canvas book. Two of them. 
<laughs> so. They're not the um, current um, magazines. They're not uh, memorabilia patterns or anything like that that uh, a lot of people have been blessed <laughs> to inherit or to be able to buy from someone. But I will tell you, this heartfelt guilt gift was absolutely wonderful for me. It just lifted my spirits and, and made me feel um, so honored that this lady's entire collection um, found a new home with someone who might can use some of it or pass it along to other people who might enjoy it. So I just wanted to thank my uh, friend who gifted that to me. She knows who she is. I didn't get her permission to share her name, so I won't. But um, I just want to thank you publicly for what you did. That was such a sweet thing to think of me, and I'm so honored. So thank you for that. Um, for that little uh, moment that you shared with me so I could uh, show that to you. And um, other than that, I think that's it for today. I'm going to get busy stitching. It's cold where we are, which is um, not too terrible considering that a lot of you are in deep snow and um, severe weather. And so my thoughts are with you, my prayers are with you, and um, but I am in my winter uh, <laughs> bedroom uh, boots, and I have a sweater on today, um, and a scarf even to keep me warm, but uh, I will be stitching and enjoying my afternoon. So I just want to just take a moment and say hi to everyone and tell you to have a happy stitching day. Bye. Hello everyone, this is Dina. I just wanted to stop in and give you a small update today. I am busily preparing uh, to go uh, to California and um, visit friends and I'm going to be stitching there at a, a local needle workshop there called We the Needle. And I've already heard from uh, Floss Tuber that they're gonna be there and stitch with me. Yay, I'm very excited. Um, I can't wait to meet you. So I wanted to just give you an update on my um, whip progress uh, for my um, whip that I had just finished my first rotation after Christmas. And this is my Sleeping Beauty. I haven't had an opportunity to really um, work on her for a little while. So I took three days this time and tried to put a little work in, into her. So I will put a picture in and show you where she was before I started this time. And now I will show you how far I got on this rotation. My goal, if you'll recall, was to start working across. And I picked uh, a line in the sand, as they say. I picked this line right here to go down to the edge of this block. And then I feathered in the end of the strand. So if I was working on a color and I had a lot left when I got to the end of that color in that block, um, I just went ahead and feathered it on down until I ran out of it. So that'll help me not have a rough edge. Uh, you know, that you can see, and it also kept me from having really short lengths of thread the next time I needed to use that color. So I am thrilled with my progress. I've got uh, almost this arm done. I have one more color of one over one skin to do to have her arm finished, and I think that will be all the skin for this one. So I'm pretty excited about that. And then I worked my way on over on her sleeve and her um, top of her dress or gown. I'm not quite sure um, whether it's a nightgown or a dress because it's so beautifully draped, but I can't tell. Anyway, um, that's what I got done this time. So I am just going to continue filling in this, finish this arm and fill in this section at least on my next rotation and just keep working across the way. And what will happen then is I'm working right up across here. So hopefully that'll get that picture to join all the way across. 
and then I can just start working my way down. So I was excited about that. I thought it went really well, and I was reminded once again when I picked this up to work on it that this fabric feels like butter. It's just absolutely wonderful and soft, and it's, it's a Jobelin, and I love Jobelin. So again, Kate, thank you for giving this away on your channel, and I'm so grateful that I won it. So um, I appreciate that very much. There's one other thing I wanted to share with you today, and that is a rack that I was given. A lady from my church came up to me and said, I have something for you if you want it. Her uh, husband had actually started this, um, I guess years ago before they had their three children, and um, he really thought this would make a beautiful addition to their home, and he was going to stitch it. He had never stitched anything before. Uh, but he thought, you know, how hard can it be making an X? And actually, I've looked at his stitches that he did, and they're beautiful stitches. He did a good job. His tension is nice and smooth. Uh, I think he probably would make a good stitcher. But he started it and got a few stitches in, and I'll show you how far he got, and said, oh, no. <laughs> this takes way too much time. But this is the, um, it's a gold collection. It's called Lost No More. So this is the um, picture, and it came. It's a kit, and it came with Ada, 18 count Ada, and this is how far he got working on that uh, staff. Not very far at all. Um, so now I have to decide: Do I want to continue working on the Ada for this piece, or do I want to sub it out and put uh, a different fabric in this one? And use this Ada for something else. And right now, I am leaning toward frogging that little bit that he stitched and repurposing this fabric for my ornaments. Because I think this color, this just beautifully natural tan color that he has, would make a great um, background for a lot of my ornaments. So I think I may do that. But... I'll let you know <laughs> as I go along, but I just thought that was such a sweet thing that um, she thought of me and um, knew I stitched and uh, brought it to me. So I just wanted to share that with you. I have wonderful friends. I hope that you are um, counting yourself among those because I do, and I enjoy spending time with you every week. So I won't um, I won't belabor it. That's what I have for today. And I am busily packing for uh, our trip to California and my stitchy time there and our visit time with our friends. So I'm looking forward to it, as you can tell. And I will touch base with you when I get back and uh, will share with you uh, what I plan to do for my one year anniversary on Frosty. Y'all have a great stitchy day. Bye. Hello everyone, this is Dina, and I am coming to you today from the Ruby Princess Cruise Line. This is our cabin that I'm in, and I have been stitching a little bit here yesterday, not much, just a little bit. And then this morning, as we were sailing, I went and found a beautiful window seat and with a table, and sat and stitched for about an hour or so, um, maybe two and I just relaxed and on my way back to my cabin just now I saw a lady doing embroidery at a different window she had found and I stopped and uh, chatted with her a little bit her name is um, Bretta and Bretta was making panels for a bee quilt that she's putting together she and her husband used to keep bees so she is making a beautiful quilt uh, and in at honor of their beekeeping uh, day. So how sweet it was to sit and talk with Bretta for a little bit and see some of her whips. Uh, even though they were on her phone as we're cruising, we brought minimal things with us, you know. But I thought I would give you just a, a hello and also to show you a little bit of progress that I've made since we last spoke. So 
this is on my whip, the 12 days of Christmas. And when you last saw it, I had my start on each of the 12 days. So since then I have added the, on the 12th, on the 12 days of Christmas, my true love gave to me. And I have put that at the top, which is the header for the piece. And I have finished the first day, the partridge in a pear tree. So that's the first one done, and I will be moving over to finish number two over here for the two turtle doves the next time that I work on this piece. And I'm hoping to work on it some more uh, while I'm sailing, possibly. Uh, but I had, uh, I wanted to get a small finish on that before I moved on, you know, to the next piece, which I did. Before I left home, I showed you a brand new start that I would be working on. And it's a Little House Needleworks pattern. And I'll have to get it back out because I closed it back up after I met Greta and showed it to her. But this is called Four Freedoms, if you'll remember. And I had started that at home just so I would have it kind of a, um, begun and have placement for it. So this is where I am. And pardon the hanging thread. I just stopped there so I could head back here. It's lunch time and I'm meeting my husband for lunch. So I wanted to share with you. I've just gotten started a little bit on this today. Not a whole lot done. Um, just a few minutes worth. And But that's what I'll be working on today as we sail. So enjoying my time. The rest of my time may be spent uh, touring around. So I'm, I'm not going to get a, a lot more stitching possibly in um, going to the gym in just a little bit uh, with my hubby. So I've got lots on the plate today, but I just wanted to say hi. I'm missing my floss tube. I'm missing the um, ability to watch you guys. I don't have that. So I'm really, I really do feel it. And I've been out of pocket now for four days, five days as we've been traveling and I can tell the difference. I am missing my friends. So uh, hopefully when I get back home, I can jump back on there and catch up a little bit on the floss tube. So I um, just wanted to let you all know I was thinking of you and missing you, although I am enjoying my time away uh, and I am stitching a little. Amanda, I'm stitching when rest time. <laughs> So I will talk to you soon. Y'all happy stitching. Hello Floss Tube. This is Dina and it is my one year anniversary on Floss Tube. So happy anniversary to me. <laughs> I am excited about it being my Floss Tube anniversary and so at the end of this little update I'm going to share with you a uh, a little way that uh, you could win a, a gift from me to celebrate my anniversary. So I'll do a quick update on my whips, tell you a little bit about my trip, and then we'll get uh, busy with the anniversary uh, giveaway. I actually was able to work on it quite a bit while I was in California. Um, as you know, if you go stitch at a meetup, uh, you do a lot of talking and visiting. So I took this piece with me. This is the 12 Days of Christmas piece that I've converted to a wall hanging. But this gives you a little idea of the uh, piece and, and how it's supposed to look. And I took it with me both to We the Needle in California, in uh, Brea, California, where I uh, met with the ladies there and stitched last Saturday. And um, then I also worked on it a little bit on the cruise ship. And believe it or not, they actually had a stitching meetup scheduled on the cruise ship. Now, the majority of the people that came were knitting and crocheting. I was the only cross-stitcher who showed up that day. But it, I was welcomed in and I had a great time. And I spent a couple hours stitching with other passengers on the cruise ship. So that was great fun. Um, this is my progress so far on the 12 days of Christmas. I now have the topper on there, the little saying on the 12, um, on the 12 days of Christmas, my true love gave to me. 
Uh, so that's finished now. And then I have completed day two, including all the back stitching. So it is completed. So my next rotation, I'm going to try to finish day three. And my thoughts are, since this is a Christmas piece, and I already have finished two days of it, that my goal may be just to finish one every month, every rotation, and I should finish it well in time to make my wall hanging or however I'm going to finish it off for Christmas next year. So um, that'll be great fun, and I think I've, I've had a good start on that. This will probably be a piece that I would take with me uh, traveling or um, when I go to my stitching retreat. Uh, the next one's in March in Indiana where I get to meet Vonna. <laughs> I'm so excited. And um, so I'm thinking that this may be one of them that I take there. So I may get ahead by finishing another one there too, which might be extra, but um, it's, it's a good travel piece because it's not so difficult, you know, that you have to concentrate so hard. So it works out pretty well. And then in my last video, when I um, talked with you about um, going on my trip, I mentioned that I was going to take a, um, a new piece that I had gotten for Christmas called Four Freedoms. This one is um, A Little House Needleworks. And I um, had wanted to do this year several pieces that are um, patriotic because I have a little ornament tree and I wanted to be able to decorate it for 4th of July. And so I thought this piece would make a great picture to put on a, a stand and display it with my ornament tree uh, for July 4th. So I had started this just briefly, just one, I had one uh, top border uh, completed um, before I left. And I got a hanging thread there, so let me make sure it's not going to get in the way. I had this little white lacy looking border completed before I left. And so while I was on the cruise ship, I got the two little uh, suns. <laughs> not sure why we have two there, but um, they're there. And I got one whole tier of the house done. Um, and these are all done in... Um, variegated threads and so um, they, I love the way that house is showing up it looks gray so this was uh, four freedoms um, put that needle there so I don't stick myself with it and I'll give you a little look now of how it's coming along I think it's going to be beautiful I'm looking forward to getting back to it on another Next time I have a rotation on it. This was also a great piece to take traveling because there were big blocks of color. And um, even though you have to do each cross, you know, the full cross each time, um, it was still a e fairly easy piece, um, you know, to work on while I was traveling. And then um, the other update I want to give you is on my Smoky Mountain Christmas piece. I worked on it before I left, and I worked on it when I got home. So I wanted to finish up that bit of work I was doing. And last time you saw it, if I have a picture, I'll insert it here. But if I don't, I'll show you where I was. I had completed the coat and had started working on this sleigh um, to, to start and I had said I wanted to work across the sleigh, kind of do um, more of this, and then work back my way back up. So that is exactly what I did. I'll show you where I'm at. I'll, I'll keep it folded for the moment so it'll be easier for me to talk around it. But you see the Santa holding the puppy dog there. And so what I have done this time is I've moved on over. I've done more of the sleigh. I've gotten the Rocky Horse done, and it's hard for you to see it, but I hope you can. There's a little sheep, a little lamb, right here, and it is also done in that whisper thread, and uh, it's precious. I haven't outlined it. There's a little kitty cat right here, a little beige-looking piece, 
And then this is a little lamb, and that's its little uh, stand that its legs are going to show that it's standing on as I do the back stitching. And you can see uh, the bag is developing. To, uh, the Santa's big bag of toys is coming along there. And then as I got this section done, I kept working my way up. After that little lamb, I started back on the tree, and I got some of the tree done. I have one color left in this tree before I get back into all the green leaves. So I was really pleased um, with that bit of progress. I had hoped a while back to go back and catch up on back stitching it, but I, um, I found that every time I got a chance to work on this, it was later at night, and I just wanted to do something that was a short little spot of color because I wasn't sure how long I was going to stitch. And when I do back stitching, I want to get started on a big section and finish a big section of it. And I didn't think that was going to be doable at the time that I was working on this each time. So I'm still making progress on it. I'm working on it. And uh, I'm enjoying it so, so very much. So looking at the full picture, I am right here. This is where I am. So I would say roughly... Uh, roughly two-thirds maybe there um, since this is what I have over from here over is done and here's what I have left to do so it's a little less than half so I should be able to finish this this year it's in my um, year of whips but I'm thinking this might be the next one I focus on to try to bring to a finish because all of the rest of my year whip pieces are big like this uh, I call this big. This is big to me. <laughs> anyway, so that is the status of my whips that I've been able to work on since my last update. I know it's not the end of the month yet, but since I was going to come on and talk about my floss tube anniversary and offer a gift, I thought I would at least go ahead and give you some cross stitch to see at the same time and just show you I have been stitching a little bit and just show you how far I've come with it but uh, the main um, thing I wanted to talk to you about today in addition to the giveaway was the trip that we made to California I just wanted to give you a couple of highlights there the couple that hosted us we had met on a cruise two years before three three years ago now and um, it's one of those rare times when you really meet up with someone and you click so well and you actually do keep in touch. And we've done that. And they've been to visit us um, a year after we sailed together or met on a cruise. They visited us for Thanksgiving. And so two years later, we're finally going to California to visit them. And as I may have mentioned before, my husband and the husband of the other couple ran in the half marathon through Disneyland on Sunday morning, and they did great. Um, my husband actually came in fourth place in his age group out of 95 people, so I was really proud of him for that. I thought that was, you know, uh, sort of bragging rights for me. I'm going to brag on him a little bit. Uh, but we had a fabulous time. We ate some wonderful food various types of food and of course the one of the biggest highlights for me was going to We the Needle and uh, stitching there and shopping there. So I do have, um, I have a tiny bit of uh, new uh, haul that I need to share with you. Uh, we the Needle, I did a little shopping and you know I'm in Stitch from Stash uh, this year, and so I'm having to be very careful about what I spend. I had to watch my budget. So let me put that crinkly bag over there. But I walked in the store having a $50 uh, budget because I had my $25 for the month, and then I had my Beach Baby Finish, which gave me another $25 credit. So I walked in there with $50 to spend, and I am proud to tell you that I spent under $50. So I'm still on budget. I'm excited, Stephanie, it worked. So let me show you what I got. Remember I said I wanted to do patriotic things for my 
tree. So I got this piece called Patriotic Sampler. And my thought here, I'll try to do it without a whole lot of glare, but my thought here is that I'm going to take pieces of the sampler, different motifs from it, different hearts, different flags, the banner, everything I can break up as Vana was telling us on her video, to think of it in small pieces so that I could make ornaments out of it. And then I thought too, at some point I may want to do the whole piece as one piece as well. But my first thought was to make ornaments for my tree. Then I found this 4th of July bird pattern that I thought was really cute and would make a great ornament for the tree. And the last one I got was a full kit called Glory House. I thought it was so cute. Glory House. And this, I'm not sure who the publisher is on that. I haven't gotten it out to look. <laughs> but I'll list it below if I can find it on here. But I got these three things at the We the Needle. They had a nice little selection there of uh, patriotic uh, pieces. And uh, so I'm excited about that. So that's my haul. <laughs> I will also insert a picture here of the ladies that were stitching together from We the Needle. And I will tell you that one of the ladies there, Sam, had contacted me after my last video and said that she was looking forward to meeting me in California. And she did come to the store to stitch with us, and I was able to meet her, and it was such a delight. It was such a delight uh, to meet someone who had who had watched my channel and had commented uh, just recently to tell me she was coming to meet me. What a treat. What a treat for me. Um, I also um, hope that Sam will go back and stitch with the other ladies that were there. There were three ladies, uh, in addition to Sam, who were there stitching, who were local. They live in that area, and so they meet up every Saturday uh, from 10.30 to 1.30, and some of them meet on Friday nights there from 4 to 6.30 or so, and then they go have dinner together. So um, I think they're all clamoring for Sam to come back and stitch with them. And I want y'all to know, she doesn't do floss tube, but her stitching is absolutely beautiful. She was working on a Save the Stitches in a beautiful purple for her daughter. And I happened to mention that it was the second time that she was doing Save the Stitches because she did the first one in black for herself. And she actually, I think, likes the purple better. But it, her work is beautiful. And for someone to tackle that piece twice just kind of amazed me. <laughs> so, Sam, I think you're awesome. Um, so that's a kind of a report on the trip. I'm glad to be home. I um, uh, was a little bit tired when I got back. Uh, we went hard for seven days. You know, we traveled a lot, saw a lot of things, toured a lot of things. And of course, we were on a you know whole different timetable. We were three hours earlier there than here, so our first day was a little rough. We got up at four thirty in the morning to get our flight because we had to leave so early, and um, we got out there at noon. And yet it was you know three o'clock our time here, and so by the time we got to their home and um, had people that were coming over for a game night and a potluck dinner for us to meet their friends. By the time we settled down to play cards, uh, it was about 10.30 their time, but it was about 1.30 hours. So I had finally had to tell them we were brain dead. <laughs> and weren't good card players at that point. Um, we had a ball, we did, we had a great time. So um, it was so delightful to meet people from another part of the country and and learn about their lifestyle, their culture, um, their food, their what they do for entertainment and all. And, you know, we're not so different. We're all very similar. Uh, but they were extremely welcoming people. So uh, I tell you that we had a, a lovely, lovely time. So um, what 
now I want to share with you what we're here to celebrate. It's a Floss Tube anniversary, and this marks one year um, of me doing Floss Tube videos. I thought I would do about 12 the first year. I wound up doing 26. Um, I found the more I stitched, the more I wanted to share with everyone what was going on, and I came up with ideas to um, make other videos sometimes that weren't all just um, whip updates. So, because you guys inspired me, you share such wonderful stories and items and, and other hobbies and things. So, it really made me want to be more interesting. And so, I thank you for that. But it has been a wonderful year. And I think mostly that is because I've met so many wonderful people. Um, I have been so blessed that several of you who have subscribed um, have also asked to be friends on Facebook and then we've started messaging each other through Facebook and have really gotten to talk a little more than just on comments, you know, that are on our videos. And, um, you know, I'm very grateful that Cowgirl Kate has uh, been so kind to have conversations with me on occasion and um, she's been a good friend. And I have met several of you through some of the uh, sales that we're doing, you know, my postcard pals, uh, you know, Lucy Mitchell, and um, I, I just think that we've had such a good time, you know, getting to know each other, uh, helping each other through my my winter uh, gift exchange partner, uh, Jessica Tracy, and I were just messaging each other last night. She had heard uh, about our tornado that had uh, hit um, here in, in our hometown, and so she was checking on me to make sure we were okay, and we were talking a bit. And then I look back over this year, and I've met some floss tubers in person through Stitch Up, Stitch Up meeting, you know, where we meet together. And I, I met Stitch and May and Organic Granny, and her friend Gay that you never see, but you hear, and um, Dina Sherward, who, uh, you know, does Every Stitch Counts, and uh, I enjoyed them so much, and then I've met, um, at my stitching retreat, I was able to meet a lady who was absolutely delightful, Joanna, uh, who watches my channel. Hi, Joanna, I hope you're well, and we email each other back and forth a little bit and try to keep up with each other's lives some, but I've also met in person through these stitching meetups, uh, Janet uh, Coker Hathaway, who has become a good friend, and uh, we're hoping we become neighbors in the next year or two uh, as my husband looks toward retirement. And Melody Adams, who came all the way from Atlanta to Macon to uh, to meet me after seeing me on Floss Tube, she came to a stitching meetup that I sponsored here. And um, Stephanie from Atlanta also, who came, um, even though she was seven months pregnant, she drove all the way down here. Um, and then, of course, most recently, watching um, my video, Sam let me know she could meet me in California, and I got to meet her last Saturday, and that was awesome, and I'm so looking forward to meeting Becky, the Obsessed Stitcher, and Vanna in March with several other people who've let me know that, that they're coming, and they're not floss tubers, and they haven't said anything publicly, so I won't release their names without their permission. But you guys know who you are, and I'm, I'm so looking forward to meeting you. Um, so this year has extremely positively impacted my life. It has enhanced my world considerably, and I, I truly thank each and every one of you who, are, who subscribe to my channel or just watch on occasion. Um, but thank you for accepting me and uh, showing me such kindness and sending me such supportive comments and encouraging me as I work through my whips and, and these sales. Um, so what I want to do today is just a small token of my appreciation for your continued support, and continued viewing of my channel and comments and friendships that you offer. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you to put a comment below, and what I want you to comment on is uh, whether or not, uh, well, actually, how often you watch Floss Tube, and whether or not you have ever met anyone uh, that you originally met on Floss Tube. 
So someone who may have made comments or friended you on Facebook or started messaging you through Facebook or YouTube, and now you have actually met them in person. Um, that's happened to me several times and it's been such a joy. I just wanted to hear from you, you know, um, if that's happened to you. If you haven't met anyone, but you can still tell me how often you watch Floss Tube. That'll still put you in the running. <laughs> and I'm going to just do a random number generator to pick a winner. So what are you going to win? Well, if the winner happens to be outside of the U.S. of A., I have actually partnered with Tammy Pollard of Color Cascades Fabrics. And she and I have worked a deal where if the winner is outside of the U.S., Australia, UK, um, New Zealand, some of the areas that I've noticed that I have some subscribers, then I'm going to uh, ask you when you make your comment to include your email or a way I can get in touch with you. Because if you're the winner, then I'm going to have to find out how to get your information to Tammy so she knows that you are my winner. Because I will be paying for a $30 gift certificate to um, color cascades fabrics for you and Tammy says that that will pretty much cover any one of her uh, pieces of fabric in a uh, fat quarter and um, so if you want a piece of fabric I wanted to make sure you could get one and so that's what she's saying uh, that it, it should be able to do that if you are um, in the US of A and your number comes up and you're the winner then I'm going to ask that in your comments, please put the best way to get in touch with you, whether you want me to email you, put your email address there, or if you'd rather me private message you through Facebook or YouTube or something like that, you have to make sure I can. <laughs> I'll announce the winner and I may tell you to get in touch with me. That might be easiest, but um, then what I'm going to do there is talk to you about your favorite place that you shop where you may have a wish list and ask you to share your wish list with me, and then I would like to send you something on your wish list. So that's the way I would like to do this giveaway, and um, ask that you'll put your comments below, and I'm going to continue collecting comments up through Valentine's Day, February 14th, and then on February 15th, I will do the random number generator for the winner of my anniversary giveaway. So thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for continuing to be supportive of my channel. I appreciate you, each and every one of you, and I enjoy all of your comments. I answer every one. So if I ever don't answer your comment, it may have been blocked. It may have gone to spam or something. I've had a few do that, and uh, I found them. Uh, but if I miss it for any reason, if you don't get an answer from me within a few days, then no, I never saw it because <laughs> I try to answer each one. They mean so much to me that you take the time to write me. Um, so I want to respond if I can anytime. So um, thank you for watching today. I hope you're having a great month. I'm thrilled that I'm still making it my stitch stash and I'm on budget. So that's a good start for the year. And um, I'm saving up now uh, for my next retreat so that I'll have some money in my budget to, to spend there. So uh, I'm looking forward to that and I'm trying not to spend anything in between. So good luck to you. I hope all of you that are doing it are doing well. I hope all of you doing your year of whips are doing well. I am on, have finished four of my five requirements. So I have the whole year to finish one more. I'd love to do more than one, but the requirement is at least one more so I know I'll make that and um, I'm just looking forward to showing you my progress as I go through so happy stitching everyone and until next time bye bye